Well, that sucks. I just recorded this video, and I guess my audio was on mute or something like that, so there is no audio on this thing, uh, so now I'm going to try to narrate this whole thing over again. Um, basically, I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max here with no display, and um, they tried a new screen and still no display. So I think what happened was that they tried to repair the screen on it, and then some, something happened, okay? So they put the old screen back in, and whatever. Um, so, in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose and repair an iPhone 11 Pro Max with, um, uh, yeah, just how to diagnose, yeah, with a black screen. So, um, so the iPhone 11 Pro Max along with, let's see, the 11, with the 11 Pro and, uh, let's see, the, like, the 10, the 10, the 10s, the 10s Max, they all have OLED screens, okay? And the main driver for these display is something called the PP3V0 display, or it's a it's a PP3V0 power line, okay? So PP3V0 means it's a power line with uh, incoming three volts, okay? So it's a three volt that powers this LCD here, okay? Or sorry, OLED, all right? And that is that is pretty much the main the main uh, power line that dry, that powers on this LCD, okay? So the other thing that can cause um, a black screen are these four-pronged um, components called, we call them display filters or data filters or something like that. And basically they're just two filters combined in, into one little um, black rectangle, rectangular component, okay? So sometimes those four-pronged components are knocked loose um, through through a uh, screen repair or something like that, and in this case, I, I inspected it under a microscope. I didn't see anything loose or anything like that, so I didn't I didn't really I didn't think that um, you know these the, um, it was the display filter that was causing this black screen. So my sole focus was this PP3V0 display uh, line right here. Okay, and um, so this software that I'm using is called ZXW Tools. It costs about $70. You can get it on our website. And basically, there's so this connector right here is um, the LCD connector. Um, and this is what drives the display um, on your screen. Okay. And if you look at the um, each little pin, there's a number associated with it. And each number is um, the dialed mo diode mode value. Um, for each pin. So diode mode is, is, if you don't know what diode mode is, you can go through my older videos, but essentially what it is is on your multimeter, there's a horizontal uh, rectangle with a line next to it. That is diode mode. And what it, what it measures is the drop in voltage across the two leads of your, um, of your probes. All right. And so on the, the, the pins on the schematics, you know, the, the red numbers, it just shows the drop in voltage. So if it says 0.64, then it's 0.64 volt drop in voltage across that pin. So that kind of allows you to diagnose and repair. And, you know, you can compare the diode mode readings on ZXW tools versus what you're actually getting. And then if something is off, then that tells you that line is bad. Okay. So what I'm doing here now is that I, I plug it in. The first thing I always do is I plug it in and I'm showing that it's getting 2.6 amps. All right. And so that tells me that this phone is working, okay? 2.6 amps is normal. I mean, this is what you're supposed to get when you plug it in, okay? And um, and so it tells me that the phone is working. It just tell and, and there's no display, obviously, so the display is bad. Phone is working, all right? So now I just focus. I just focus solely focus on this LCD connector here, okay? Because it's probably something wrong with that LCD connector. Oh. Okay, so this is the LCD connector zoomed in under my microscope. Um, I'm going to zoom out just for reference. Um, let's see. This is the LCD connector. Um, this is the digitizer connector, which handles the touch. And then this is the air speaker flex uh, connector. And then this is the battery connector. Okay, so that kind of if you open it up, this kind of gives you a reference as to where the LCD connector is. Now, this is the same LCD connector under ZXW Tools, which is basically, you know, this is the, this is the schematics um, software that we use to diagnose and repair everything. And it's, it's a big thing. I mean, I think, I think if you're serious about micro soldering, then you have to get this ZXW Tools software. Um, again, like I said, these red numbers are the diode mode values. Um, it allows you to go down each of the pins 
And you, when you're when you're doing diode mode, you have to make sure that the battery is disconnected. Okay, there, you have to make sure that there's no power going to it. Otherwise, you're going to short something out. So disconnect the battery. Go down each of the pins. Compare the value that you get in diode mode to the value that you find in ZXW tools. Okay. <clears throat> And um, so my sole, again, my sole focus is this PP3B0 display uh, power line, okay? So what ended up happening was that, you know, I, I went down and, and measured this, uh, the diode mode value on this, on this pin right here, and I got, the first time I did it, I got something like 2.54 um, volts, and it's supposed to be 0.647. Okay, so it's something definitely wrong with that line. So those are display filters, like I said, that can also also cause a black screen. So zooming into it, um, this, uh, so the PP3V0 line is going to be the eighth pin starting from the bottom left, all right? And what I'm doing now is, you know, my, the red probe is to ground, which ground is basically anything that is, um, is grounded on the iPhone, which includes the top of, I think that's probably the Wi-Fi chip. So I just put my red probe to the top of the Wi-Fi chip. You can put it to any 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 ground point on the iPhone, okay? Which includes uh, probably the end ends of the connector. You, you, everything in gray is is ground, so you can just you can pop that red that red probe to any point in ground, okay? And then put the black probe to the pin that you're testing. And the pin that I'm testing is going to be the eighth pin, like I said, starting from the bottom left. All right. And now I'm going to test the actual filter, okay? Um, so, so eight pin, all right, so I just want to make sure that I'm getting the right filter, so there's continuity going from the eight pin to that filter, so I know that that is the display filter, okay, so now I'm putting my red probe on the ground, the black to the, to one side of the filter, and then I'm going to put my black, my black to the, to the other side of the filter, and, um, you can, you can put both pins to each side of the, the filter as well, and it should just read zero, that's what it should read, okay, but, this filter is actually not reading zero. There's actually a voltage drop across it, which tells me that this filter is bad because a filter is, is supposed to just read zero. All right. Um, so um, if I measure the, the left side from this view, the left side of that filter, um, that is that the incoming power, okay, and that reads 0.66, which if you look at ZXW tools, that's the value that I'm supposed to get, okay? Uh, it's just that on the other side of it, since the filter is bad, I'm getting a, a different reading. So um, so there's nothing wrong with the actual incoming power. It's just once it gets the filter, uh, the filter is bad, so it's not giving us the correct um, voltage. All right, so the fix is to just replace this filter right here. And um, so... I'm using a JVC NASE 2B, I think, which is just a nano soldering iron. Retail price is like fourteen hundred dollars. So um, there's there's really no easier way to do it. I mean, you know, you you really need the tools in order to fix this thing. And a new screen's not going to fix it. Um, each of the tips on this on this uh, soldering station, they're like thirty something dollars. You know, so it's sixty dollars just for the tips. <laughs> Anyways. Um, um, so basically, I'm just kind of scraping away some of the black epoxy that they use to hold this thing in place, just so that I, you know, once I put the new filter in, it, it'll, it'll get in, it'll stay in there easily, um, a little bit more easy, and, 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 yeah, it just makes it easier later on, so I'm just kind of scraping away some of the black stuff, okay. Um, okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking my soldering iron and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna tin I'm gonna tin those two pads. You see those two pads where the filter is connected to? I'm just gonna 
um, put a little bit of flux, and I use Amtech VS213TF, which is, in my opinion, is the best stuff out there. And you have to use flux. Without flux, you're just it's gonna get you're gonna get solder, and it just doesn't flow, you know. So you have to use flux. Okay, so I just put a little bit of solder, 6337 solder, on the end of my um, my soldering iron, and I just tin those two pads. Uh, you have to make sure that you don't you don't get any um, you know, you don't get any bridges, and it looks like it's kind of bridging a little bit right now. So, so you just got, you just have to be careful, you know. And and the flux really helps with with it not bridging. Um, but it's such a tiny, tiny spot that that um, looks like somebody's there. Okay, no. Um, and and yeah, so. So I'm gonna actually make a mistake here. Um, I thought that this was a 0201 package size for this component. Um, 0201 is the second smallest. Um, 01005 is the smallest. So this is actually 01005 package. And what I'm gonna do is um, I have generic filters here, and so the filter that I'm gonna use is actually the um, the battery connector filter for like a 5S. That's that's what you'll that's the kind of that's the so so this is zero two zero one. You can see it's too big, so I'm just gonna get rid of it and and uh, and get the zero one zero zero five out. Um, like I said, this is a 6S backlight filter, which is zero two zero one. All right, and you can look up package sizes for SMD components on Wikipedia or just Google it or something like that, and you'll you'll see what I'm saying. Um, so now I'm going to get that 01005, pop it in there, and this is just a basic, uh, just, just a basic filter. Uh, it should work for this line, no problems. Uh, taking me a little time to get the filter out. Um, pop the filter in, and uh, basically just use your soldering iron to get the two ends tacked down. Make sure there's no bridges. Don't forget the flux. I'm, I'm looking at YouTube right now, and I just search for iPhone 11 Pro Max no display, and you see all these, like, I'm pretty sure they don't use micro soldering on, on any of these repairs. Maybe some of them, but. But the only way to really fix it is really just, I mean, you have to, yeah, there's no way a new screen, you have to use micro soldering to fix it. You need soldering iron. In this case, at least, you know, if you have a, sometimes you have a black screen with a bad display, you know. So if you look here, I the, the bottom part is actually bridged, and um, I didn't I didn't feel like unbridging it, or I tried to unbridge it, but it, it wasn't going. So what I did was I just looked on ZXW tools, and those two points are connected anyway. So anyways, I'm just gonna leave the bridge. It's not it's, it's really not a big deal, All right? Oh, man, I hope this audio is working now. Otherwise, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> There's not going to be any audio. This is not working. Um, so anyways, as you can see, the two red points, those are already connected. So that's where I have it bridged. I'm just going to leave it. Um, now I'm going to test each side of the filter, just make sure everything is right, and I'm getting, uh, let's see, I'm getting 0.6, I think 5.8 on, on both sides now, so I know that filter is fine, now I'm going to test the pin, and I'm also getting 6.658, so I know that everything is good, now I'm going to get a little bit of 
uh, isopropyl, 99% isopropyl alcohol on the end of a Q-tip and just kind of wash this down a little bit. The IPA is going to evaporate and then I use the other side of the Q-tip to kind of dry it up a little bit. And as you can see, there's like a little component that was actually accidentally stuck to my Q-tip there. So I'm going to prop pop that out. I think that was the old success filter. So <laughs> that was an accident. I'm going to pop that out and throw it away. And so basically just kind of clean it up and then I ended up having this piece of lint on the left side here which happens frequently with Q-tips which is, gets really annoying but um, there's no, <laughs> I mean Q-tips are probably the easiest things in order to do this. It looks like somebody, I don't know what's going on out there but there must be some sort of customer looking for me or something, I don't know. But she is walking around in the hallways, we have cameras all around here. Oh, no, okay. Um, let's see, okay, this video is almost over, um, basically, yeah, everything's tested, everything's good, everything's cleaned up, now I'm just going to plug a display back into it and see if I can get a display to go, so I just kind of nudge it a little bit with my tweezers to make sure that the joint is solid and it's not going to like just pop off again, and it is solid, so I'm content with that, and now the last thing to do is just to test it, pop a screen on there and test it. Okay, so new screen, plug it in, 2.6 amps, no problemos. <clears throat> and I get a display. So as far as I'm concerned, this video is over. Um, anyways, thank you for watching, um, and stay tuned for more. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop and then click on this first uh, product right here there's a coupon code that uh, gives you fifty dollars off of our online course so our online course it was created by Tom and myself um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering so basically we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of, how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's, it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get $50 off. So... Thank you for watching our channel and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.